Have you ever wanted to be a zombie? Who hasn't? Well, put down that T-Virus. Now you can become one without all the decomposition and cravings for human flesh. Today, Tiffany shows you how to do zombie makeup. Hey guys, it's Tiffany. Today, I'm going to teach you how to do basic zombie makeup. I've got some things that are professional grade items, but also some things that you can just get from around your house. Basic tools you're gonna need are a color wheel. This one is a Ben Nye Bruise and Abrasions wheel. This is what I use for bruising and I use it for zombie makeup too, but they actually have a zombie wheel you can use. You need some loose powder to set it. Um, you need a clown white makeup. I don't have any, so I'm just using a really light concealer that I have. You need sponges for your abrasions. You need some kind of liquid latex or you can use extra flesh. Um, both of these are Mehrin. Um, brand. These are really awesome. To put this on, you'll need some kind of Q-tip will work. You can also use paint brushes for any of this. To get the black around your eye, you can use makeup or like this, or you can use like a color pot if you want something to look really wet. For blood, you can use blood capsules, which I have a couple of. These are the kind that you can put in your mouth, or you can use some kind of um, red lip gloss. This one is really watery, so that's the reason I'm using this one. Whenever doing zombie makeup or any kind of abrasion makeup, I always pick out a couple spots on my face. Um, for zombie makeup specifically, you have to think that a zombie has literally come at this person and is not off part of their, their face. Um, since we are just going to do some basic makeup, what I'm gonna do is one large gash in this area. I like to do something on the cheek and then something on the forehead because, you know, you ate brains. <laughs> so you wanna do something up here. Um, also try to get some really darkness around the eyes, sallow them up really nicely. And then some blood coming out of your mouth is the basics of what I would usually do. And remember, don't go overboard. What looks worse than, you know, no zombie makeup is absolutely horrific over the top zombie makeup. Unless you're a professional and then that looks awesome. So first I'm gonna start with a really light BB cream. I'm actually just putting this all over my face. Foundation for boys or whatever. This is just really light. I have nothing on my face today, by the way. Now, if you don't have clown white makeup or zombie makeup, if you have a really light concealer like this, one thing I do is don't rub it in really deep because the more you rub it in, then the more it's gonna start to blend into your skin and then the different like yellows and the red tones in your face are gonna come out. First, I'm gonna outline kind of where I have my different gashes. I have just a little black eyeliner that's gonna help me with that. That way you guys can see what it is I'm doing. Whenever doing zombie makeup, uniformity is not key. You don't want it. If it looks uniform, then they're going to be able to tell that this is just bad movie makeup. Now with liquid latex, once you start putting it on, the moment you do, it's going to start drying. When it starts drying, it becomes almost paste-like and you can pull it away from your face and it becomes extra flesh, which is what is in here. So I can always add a little bit more of that. The idea is to create an outline of where you want your gash to be. And then at that point, start outlining it in the liquid latex and fill it with blood afterwards. So you can actually see how me pulling away from this or pulling this away from my face is actually creating some extra skin pockets. What I'm gonna do is take the red makeup and the blood and I'm literally going to put that in there and just make it look like my skin has been rising off my face. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna start putting in some red in this. Now, whenever you get a color wheel like this, each of them are meant for different things. Yellow is meant for a bruise that's gonna last a while. Red is really, really fresh. And then the darker you get, that's gonna be a lot longer, a lot deeper of a bruise, but it can also be a lot of tissue muscle depth, which is kind of what I'm using it for this time. Um, an actual zombie wheel is gonna have a lot, a lot more grays to it, but this is what I do. People will ha have me do um, 
bruise makeup on set. So I'm just using this because this is what I have. Devil is in the details. So what you want to do is take a Q-tip. Q-tips are really important to this. Don't try to do it without it or it won't look right. Take a good glob of red. You can also use the blood capsules at this point, but because this is a tutorial, I don't want to use them all up right away. Remember that little pocket of flesh? We'll just start digging into the pocket of flesh with a Q-tip. Just dig in there a little bit and make that kind of pop out there. Now remember, you don't want to color over that flesh. You want people to see that, so leave that just the way that is. To make this less of just a face gash and an accident victim and more of a zombie, now I've got to deal with my eyes. There are one of two ways you can go with this. Either you can keep them completely whited out or you can try to blacken and sallow them out a lot. That is the way I'm going to go with just so I can show you guys what that looks like. And probably the biggest thing when zombie makeup with zombie makeup is your face should look like a little bit of chaos. I accidentally started getting little red dots over here, and you know what? I really ended up liking it, so I kept them. Now, the problem is that I added too many dots over here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna blend it out a little bit, but I also might may add some powder, because that's a little heavy. This is like fresh off the boat, zombie. <laughs> it's like, oh, this just happened to you in like the last half an hour, didn't it? Yeah. Blood capsules. These ones, just make sure you actually, um, if they're blood capsules, they should be able to stay in your mouth. And um, it's gonna stain your teeth a little bit, but um, these are actually food safe. That way it's not going to be you know, harmful to you. It tastes like a really bad chocolate mint. Now, if you're using these for a set, for a movie, anything like that. My rule is one pack of blood capsules per person, depending on how long you're filming. I've gone through, I had a beat up scene where I got beat up severely and I went through a ton of them all in one day. So otherwise, one capsule per zombie was pretty fine. Oh, it tastes nasty. And there you guys have it. You have officially turned me into a zombie. It's been a rough week, I guess. I, don't know. I hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Until next time, I will see you on next Monday. 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 So take care and post me any questions below and check out the links below. Bye. Impulse is produced by the Freedom Network. Ever wanted to earn revenue from your videos? Freedom offers a great partnership program which includes access to hundreds of thousands of audio tracks, sponsorships with great partners, and most importantly, a no lock-in contract. You can leave at any time for any reason. We accept everyone, both big and small. For more information, click here or visit the link in the video description.